We embark on a journey through the pages of Scripture to uncover the rich history of angelic encounters that adorn the biblical narrative. As we delve into this extraordinary theme, we cannot help but be amazed at how frequently angels are mentioned throughout the Bible. It is often said that you cannot read the Bible without encountering the divine realm and being astounded by the presence and involvement of angels. From the opening chapters of Genesis to the climactic visions of Revelation, these celestial beings play a significant role in God's dealings with humanity. They are messengers, warriors, guardians, and agents of God's will, intricately woven into the fabric of biblical history. When we consider the vast array of angelic encounters recorded in Scripture, we are left in awe of the profound ways in which these heavenly beings intersect with the human experience. From the comforting presence of an angel in the wilderness to the breathtaking visions of angelic hosts filling the skies, the biblical accounts offer a glimpse into the majesty and mystery of God's celestial messengers. Whether it is the angelic announcement of the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, the heavenly visions granted to prophets and apostles, or the miraculous interventions to protect and guide God's people, the presence of angels filled the biblical narrative. Their presence serves as a testament to God's immeasurable love and care for His creation, as well as a reminder of the unseen realm that surrounds us. In this sermon, we will embark on an exploration of angelic encounters throughout history, uncovering the ways in which these divine messengers have influenced the course of events and shaped the lives of individuals. May we be inspired to seek a deeper connection with the heavenly realm, to recognize the spiritual realities at play. Within scripture there are evil angels. In the book of Revelation, a profound prophecy unveils the existence of four angels bound at the great river Euphrates, waiting for their appointed time of release. This prophetic passage in Revelation 9 verses 14 to 15 speaks of a future event during the end times when these restrained angels will be set free to bring devastation upon the earth. The precise nature and purpose of their destructive mission are not explicitly revealed in the text. However, their binding at the Euphrates River signifies their current state of restraint, indicating that they await the precise hour, day, month, and year ordained by God for their release. The mention of angels bound at the Euphrates River in the book of Revelation sparks contemplation about the unfolding of future events. This prophecy hints at a time of great upheaval and divine intervention in human history. It serves as a reminder of the sovereignty and control that God exercises over all creation, including spiritual beings. These bound angels symbolize the anticipation and buildup of cosmic forces during the end times, as the stage is set for the ultimate climax of God's redemptive plan. While the exact details and implications of their release remain a mystery, this prophetic passage stirs a sense of anticipation and underscores the need for readiness and spiritual vigilance in the face of coming trials. The imagery of angels bound at the Euphrates River highlights the divine timetable that governs the unfolding of events in human history. It underscores the truth that God is in control of the course of time and the activities of spiritual beings, whether those spirit beings are good or evil. God is in control. These angels, though currently restrained, are being held in readiness for their assigned mission. But this prophecy serves as a reminder of the certainty of God's plan and the imminent fulfillment of His purposes. As believers, we are called to be watchful, prayerful, and spiritually prepared, recognizing that the end times will bring both judgment and the ultimate victory of Christ over all evil. Let us find assurance in the knowledge that, even in the midst of great tribulation, God is in control and His purposes will ultimately prevail. In the book of 2 Peter, we encounter a remarkable revelation about imprisoned angels. The Bible tells us that God did not spare the angels when they sinned but cast them into Tartarus, a place of confinement. These angels are now held there, bound by chains of darkness, awaiting their ultimate judgment. The specific actions or transgressions committed by the angels mentioned in 2 Peter 2 verse 4 are not explicitly stated in the biblical text. As a result, Theologians and scholars have put forward various theories and interpretations regarding their nature and deeds. While these theories are speculative, they offer different perspectives on the possible actions of these imprisoned angels. Here are a few theories. Theory 1. Cohabitation with humans. One theory suggests that these angels engaged in illicit relationships with human beings, referred to as the sons of God, mentioned in Genesis 6 verses 1-4. According to this view, 
these angels violated the divine order by entering into unnatural unions, resulting in a corrupt generation known as the Nephilim. Theory 2. Rebellion and Rebellion Leaders Another theory proposes that these angels were leaders or instigators of a significant angelic rebellion against God. This rebellion might have involved a direct challenge to God's authority and an attempt to establish an alternate order or dominion. Theory 3. Involvement in the Sins of Sodom and Gomorrah some theories suggest that these angels were somehow connected to the wickedness and sexual immorality prevalent in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This connection is based on the mention of Sodom and Gomorrah in the preceding verses of 2 Peter 2 verse 4. It is important to note that these theories are speculative and not explicitly confirmed by the biblical text. The lack of specific details in 2 Peter 2 verse 4 invites different interpretations and allows for a range of theories. Ultimately, the focus of the passage is not on the specific actions of these angels but rather on the fact that God did not spare them from judgment, emphasizing his righteousness and justice. The concept of imprisoned angels in Tartarus raises intriguing questions about the spiritual realm. It suggests that while some fallen angels are in bondage, others remain unbound and active on the earth. Some people have argued that the sins these angels committed are worse than the devil as the devil is currently allowed to go up and down this world. Whereas these angels, and others like these angels, are bound and locked up. Jude 1 verse 6 And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. This verse is another verse in support of 2 Peter 2 colon 4, that alludes to a specific group of angels who failed to maintain their original position or authority, and abandon their rightful dwelling place. As a consequence of their disobedience, God has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness until the time of final judgment. There are scholars who believe that the sins of these angels are considered worse than the devils, because their punishment seems to be currently more severe than the devils. The mention of these angels being bound in everlasting chains under darkness suggests a severe and permanent punishment. This imagery indicates that these angels have been completely removed from any influence or interaction with the physical world. In contrast, the devil, according to the Bible, retains a certain level of freedom to operate and tempt humanity. It is important to note that these discussions delve into theological interpretations and debates, as the Bible does not provide exhaustive details on the specific sins committed by these angels. Therefore, Individuals' perspectives on the severity of their transgressions may differ, and interpretations can vary among different Christian denominations and theologians. However, the imprisonment of these fallen angels underscores God's justice and his authority over the spiritual realm. It reminds us that God judges sin every time. The imagery of imprisoned angels in chains of darkness reveals the seriousness of sin and its consequences. It emphasizes the reality of divine judgment and the accountability of spiritual beings for their actions. While we may not fully understand the intricacies of the spiritual realm, the Bible's mention of imprisoned angels invites us to reflect on the significance of obedience and submission to God. It serves as a reminder that our choices have eternal implications and that God's justice will ultimately prevail. The Bible consistently teaches us that choices have consequences. This fundamental principle applies to both our actions and our decisions. Although the specific actions of these angels are not explicitly revealed in the text, their imprisonment illustrates the just judgment of God. It emphasizes that even celestial beings are held accountable for their choices. This truth extends to us as well, as humans created in the image of God. Our decisions and actions have consequences, both in this life and in eternity. The Bible warns us about the devastating effects of sin and encourages us to choose righteousness and obedience to God's commands. Sin, by its very nature, carries consequences. The Bible makes it clear that sin separates us from God and leads to spiritual consequences. The story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is a prime example. When they chose to disobey God's command and partake of the forbidden fruit, they experienced the immediate consequence of being expelled from the garden. Sin introduces brokenness, pain, and suffering into our lives and the world around us. It damages relationships, distorts our understanding of truth, and hinders our communion with God. The consequences of sin highlight the seriousness of our choices and the need for redemption through Jesus Christ. 
Thankfully, God offers forgiveness and salvation through His Son, enabling us to be reconciled to Him and experience the restoration of our relationship with Him.